Well, that was fun. The UPS guy just dropped this parcel off, but before he'd let me have it, I had to pay the import duty and handling fees. And I really wasn't expecting to be paying out any money today, so there wasn't too much in the house. I had to go raiding a couple of piggy banks. So now he's got a bag full of change and I've got this box, but I'm glad I've got it because there's something that I'm really looking forward to being able to show to you. As you can see from the video title and the thumbnail, it's a Nixie clock, but not just any Nixie clock. This one is a little bit special. I need to go back in time three years though to explain more. So three years ago, I put out a video on YouTube where I'd bought three Nixie clocks off eBay with the intention of finding the most affordable one that was of a decent quality that I could recommend to people. This is the one I ended up deciding upon of the three that I bought from a company called Mill Clock. Now, I'd never heard of them before at the time. Mill Clock are based in Ukraine and this clock uses iron 14 tubes and it costs around about $135, I think, at the moment. They've sold about 400 and odd of them, so it's you know, quite popular. But they haven't just sat on their laurels since then, just making this. They've been investing, and earlier on this year, they sent me an email. This was the first time I'd been in contact with them, and they sent an email over and said, do you want to have a look at our Kickstarter page? They were just launching a, a new Nixie Clock on Kickstarter. And I had a look at it and I thought, yeah, that's all nice and that, but uh, not much I can do with a Kickstarter page. So I just uh, replied to them and said, yeah, that's fine. Perhaps uh, maybe get in touch when it's finished or you've got something to show that I could maybe show in a video. And kind of a bit of a brush off because I get a lot of emails about Kickstarter pages and uh, most of them don't end up becoming anything. So I just kind of ignored it. Anyway, they got back in touch about a month ago and said, it's ready, we can send it to you in the post. We've got one that you can have, you just pick the color, the finish, a few little options and things, and we'll send it straight over. So I had to go back to remind myself what, what this was about. And I had a look here and I spotted something I hadn't seen first time, because I just kind of quickly brushed past it. It says it uses ZIN18, the new Nixie tube and clocks. Now, ZIN, well, IN18s, without the Z, are uh, recognisable Nixie tubes. ZIN18s, what are those? Turns out that they're using new Nixie tubes, newly manufactured ones, not new old stock that they've got out of a box, but no, they're making new Nixie tubes. Now, you might be aware, if you're into Nixie clocks, that there's a, a chap, Dalibor Farney, who's in the Czech Republic, and he's been manufacturing Nixie tubes again. He started up making them a few years ago, and he makes his own tube. So I got in touch with the uh, meal clock people and said, oh, are your tubes coming from Dalibor Farney? They said, no, no, these are our own tubes. So these are, there's now two people making new Nixie tubes. So I thought, well, I'd like to have a look at that. So I agreed to get it sent over and they've sent it to me. Now, looking at the tubes being made on the meal clock site, it's a very complicated, time-consuming and elaborate process that looks like there's a lot of man hours go into these. So these are not cheap to manufacture. They cost, looking on their website, $100 a tube. This clock's got six of them in it. So you can imagine it's not cheap, but it's not just $600. It doesn't just multiply up like that. No, this one, you've got, of course, got the rest of the case and all that kind of stuff. It's $1,000 at the moment. So yes, not cheap and definitely not something I could have afforded to have bought myself just to show it in a video. But they've sent one over so I can show it to you here today. So this is a bit of an unusual situation. I've got something I could never have afforded myself, but I'm able to show it to you. So without any further ado, let's open the box up and have a look at this new Nixie clock. Understandably, given the value of this, they've taken great care over the packaging. I was a bit concerned that the outer cardboard box was slightly squashed, but once I got it open, I found they'd accounted for that and everything inside was well padded and double boxed. They also provide a cleaning cloth and rubber gloves for handling the tubes because you've got to assemble this. Now, you'll hear people say you shouldn't touch tubes as the grease off your fingers will create a hot spot and damage them. They're mixing Nixies up with halogen bulbs. Nixies are cold cathode tubes. They don't get hot. The gloves are there just so you don't get your fingerprints on the tubes. Now, I chose an aluminium block for the base of mine. It's a very simple design with a control knob on the top right and a power input in the middle at the back. It's their newest design, but they also sell the model that was available on Kickstarter still. That one comes in a case that has controls on the front and the circuitry is visible inside. 
The new design like mine is also available in black and with a glass top so that you can see inside and look at the circuit board. But since I've got other skeleton type Nixie clocks this time, I decided to just go for something that looked a little bit more sophisticated. As well as a comprehensive instruction manual, you also get a warranty card that covers those ZIN18 tubes for 15 years. You can see they've got quite a lot of confidence in their product. Now, if you were adventurous, you could buy those tubes on their own and construct your own clock around them. But for me, it's time to put the gloves on and put this whole thing together. I do have very large hands though, and these gloves are more of a medium size, so the inevitable happened. Never mind though, a quick trip to the kitchen later and I'm back on track. Even when they aren't illuminated, these are still fascinatingly intricate objects, the kind of thing that you'd imagine just couldn't be made anymore. After the Nixie factory shut down decades ago, you'd have thought that that was the end of that. But these reimagined ones are better than ever, easier to plug in and there's been more consideration made for aesthetics as well as the functionality. The combination of the metal and glass on these is really quite eye-catching. And of course they're not quick to make. It takes Millclock's team of skilled craftspeople a total of six hours to make a single tube. Of course, these are all designed just to plug straight into the base. You can see also in the middle, there's a multicolor LED that illuminates the center of the tube from below. So everything just plugs neatly into the base. But once you've got all the tubes and the separators, those are the sort of neon type colons between the hours, the minutes and the seconds. Well, once you've got all those in there, you might want to straighten everything up a little bit because you can get these at a bit of an angle and still have them plugged in properly. The lead on the power supply, though, I think that is a little bit short. You'll need to keep the whole thing quite near a socket or perhaps use an extension. It outputs 12 volts at 2 amps. And once I've got it all plugged in and switched on, you can see what it looks like in action. The time of the date had already been set, so I didn't really need to do anything else. The date automatically displays on here once every one minute and three seconds. That's so it kind of moves around the minutes all the time. It doesn't keep showing at the same point and it displays for 14 seconds. Now, if, like me, you'd rather just have the clock continuously display all the time, that auto date display can be deactivated in the settings. All the features of the clock are controlled by this rotary encoder at the back right. It's a clicky knob that can be rotated in either direction as well as pushed down to make selections. As you can see, the LEDs are all illuminated on this at the moment, but turning that to the right turns the lights on or off. And turning it to the left gets it to display the date. So if you don't want it coming up automatically, you can still get the date to display just by twisting the dial. To get into the settings, you push the button down. And you can see the illumination light up below the selection that you're adjusting. So it's very easy to set the time and date by spinning that knob and then pushing it down to move on to the next digits. Now, there are more settings in this than just the time and the date, though. You can configure many different features of the clock. There are multiple pages, all color coded by the LEDs that light up from below. So if, for example, I want to turn off that auto date display, well, that's on the fourth page of settings, which is illuminated in light green. And it's the last tube on the right that I need to select. And it can show either one for on or zero for off for that feature. So if I get through to that and change it to zero, that means that the auto date will no longer be displayed. There are plenty more things that you can customize on the clock, such as the color of those LEDs, if you do want them to display. And also you can set an alarm on here and an hourly chime if you wish. So I'll do both of those things now. I'll set it for 14.58 for the alarm. By the way, you can change this to a 12 hour clock if you prefer. You don't have to have it as a 24 hour clock, but I'll just move through to the alarm setting, which is this one. So just a quick spin to move that around to 58. And then the next digit along out of those end two, one means that the alarm is on. And then the next one, a one means that the hourly chime is on. So both those things are set now. Let's just have a listen to what the alarm sounds like. The alarm will sound for a minute and a half if left unattended, but if you want, you can also switch it off earlier by twisting the dial. Now here's what the hourly chime sounds like. Beep. 
So here's a table of all the things that you can change if you want to, but if you're like me, once you've got it set up how you like, then the only thing that you're likely to go back and change is the time. However, if you'd rather change these settings in a more user-friendly manner, then you can always use an app that's available for iOS or Android. To activate this feature, you turn on Wi-Fi on the clock by pushing down on the control knob while twisting it to the right. That then switches on the Wi-Fi and you can then access the Wi-Fi hotspot that's coming from the clock. And once you've connected to that, then you launch the app on your device. In here, you have access to all the same settings you get on the clock itself, but rather than having to refer back to the manual to remind yourself which page, which color of LED and which tube relates to a particular setting, it's just a matter of tapping the clear label button on the screen. A couple of features I haven't already mentioned. If you find the clock is running fast or slow, you can compensate for that in here. And you can also choose your preferred LED color cycling mode, or if you just want one color to stay on and display, you can choose mode zero and select that color using the RGB sliders. Or of course, if you prefer, just turn the LEDs off entirely. If you want, you can get the clock to check the correct time using the internet at whatever interval you select from once every 15 minutes to once every 24 hours. To enable a clock to do this though, it needs to have access to your Wi-Fi. So of course, using the app, you provide it with your Wi-Fi's SSID and password. Now, I'm not a fan of having too many things just sitting on my Wi-Fi, so I didn't set this feature up. I was quite happy for the clock just to keep its own time. But then this happened every 15 minutes which was a little bit annoying. That's the clock telling me that it tried to connect to the Wi-Fi to check the time, but it couldn't do. Now to stop it doing that, I needed to deactivate that Wi-Fi option. And the only way you can get it to do that is on the clock itself. So that's the first digit on page four in lime green. Changing that from one to zero meant that the Wi-Fi was switched off and it no longer tried to pull the time on the internet. So I got no more error beeps. The reason I mention this here is because there was no mention of it in the manual. It didn't explain what that random beep, or it seemed like a random beep at the time was for. I've got to say though, this manual is for the other model of clock, the one that was on Kickstarter that came with an optional GPS antenna and a remote control. Ideally, they'd provide a new manual for this new clock. Maybe it's just not ready yet. In the back of here, it mentions an app though for Windows called Mill Clock Commander. I haven't found that available to download anywhere, but I have tried the Android app as well as the iOS one. And I've got to say they both work as well as one another, but I definitely recommend that they go back, revisit and refresh the manual just to make things a little bit clearer in places. But once you've got it all set up exactly how you want, it's unlikely you'd need to change any of those settings. It really is a, a stunning clock and the craftsmanship on those new tubes is outstanding. Now, I do happen to own an IN18 Nixie clock as well. And side by side, you can see that the digits are the same size. They are, however, much brighter on the new clock. I suspect my old clock is running those tubes dimmer than they need to be in an attempt to prolong the life. But it's the only IN18 clock I have. So this is as bright as it gets. And I'm just really using it to show that you can see that the new tubes perfectly mimic the style as well as the positioning of those digits within the tubes. Now in a well-lit room, my old clock is really pretty useless. However, this new one is perfectly legible. But then again, while my old clock is particularly dull, this one is also particularly bright. It will light up a room that's in the dark. And other than turning off the LEDs, the brightness for the tubes themselves can't be adjusted. So you do need to think carefully about where you're going to put this as it could be distracting in a dark room. For example, if you were turning all the lights off to watch a movie or something. Incidentally, if you'd prefer to turn off those flashing colons or separators, that's something you can do. You can also get them to flash at a different rate if you prefer. But one thing you can't do is get them to light continuously if that's what you want. Although I'm not too sure. I think that might be something that could be updated in software. Every morning for an hour or so at 2 a.m., the clock runs the tubes through a process once a minute to prevent cathode poisoning. It's a bit like a screensaver in a way, as some digits get used more than others. It's a good idea to give them all a bit of a workout once a day. Now, you can switch this off, but it's not recommended because it's a bit of a housekeeping thing. It's something that it's better to do than not to do. I think you can change the time of day. It happens, though. 
So I think that's covered off all the important points. It's a new Iron 18 style Nixie clock in 2019. I'd never have imagined in my lifetime that Nixie tubes would have made a comeback. I mean, what next? People are going to start buying phew, vinyl records or something. You know, it's so nice to be able to feature something on this channel that is being made again, that's come back from the dead, if you will. I mean, I've featured so many things that people ask, why is there nothing like that nowadays? And the answer is really, I suppose, because it's not financially viable. Things like the Sony PSF9 Flamingo vertical turntable, or even a decent high quality cassette deck. You just can't get them anymore. I suppose this isn't financially viable for a lot of people watching this video. There aren't that many people out there that would want to spend a thousand dollars on a digital clock. But then again, not everyone could afford a supercar. And yet, just the other week, I was going to take my car in for a service, and next to it, they built a massive Porsche garage. I don't know anyone that owns a Porsche. I don't think I ever will do. So, you know, there are people out there that have this money to spend, and maybe those people would be interested in this. But even if this is not the kind of thing that you or I would normally buy, I hope it's a success for the Mill Clock Company because it keeps the whole thing alive, keeps Nixie tubes alive. You can get other models in their range that are from new old stock tubes, and they'll go all the way down to $55, I think, for a single digit Nixie clock. So yeah, there's a whole range in there. You don't just have to spend a thousand dollars, but wow, what a nice, what a nice object that is. So I'm very uh, um, appreciative of them for sending this one through. It really is something that I thought I'd never get the opportunity to see. And I hope you've enjoyed having a look at it here today. I'll put some links to them in the video description text box so you can have a look at this in a little bit more detail. But that is it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.